as an art director in feature film and games, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what a digital sculpture is and show you some of the creative advantages these programs offer. So these are the same software used to create digital characters like Gollum and the crew of the Flying Dutchman for pirates. So we'll start with this digital female figure. And you can see if I move my cursor across the form, I can either pull out or push in. And I can also grab points on that surface and slide them around. And I have a variety of brushes down here along the bottom, like the inflate tool. And I can also go back and smooth out any of those changes I just made. And because this is a digital sculpture, I can also hit Control Z to undo. And you'll notice that the skin is a lighter shade of red than the eyes and the hair. That's because it's actually a different surface. So what that allows me to do is affect changes on the skin while maintaining the integrity of the eyes or the hair. And I can also paint a mask onto the skin surface. So this way when I move my cursor across the form, it essentially locks out that area that I've already masked. And let's go ahead and zoom out. And what you're looking at here is the final sculpture, but when I started this form, I began with what's called a low resolution mesh. So you can see here, there are about a thousand of these little squares that make up this surface. And the way this software works is that when I'm ready to add detail, I subdivide this mesh. And what it does is take each one of those squares and divides it exponentially. So I might start with a low resolution mesh that's only about a thousand of those squares, but as I subdivide it, I can quickly reach meshes that number into the millions to get all those finite details. And you'll notice that if I change the mesh at a lower level, then step back up in levels, all the finite details follow the changes I made to the mesh at the lower levels of detail. And I can use the mask tool again to quickly mirror changes from one side of the mesh to the other. Undo those changes, and you can see this orange line is actually going to work as a joint. So what I'm doing is masking off the part of the figure that I don't want to move, and then drawing this line as a joint and what this allows me to do is quickly pose the character. So you can see that I can draw this line at any point on the surface and then use it to rotate these joints. So you could use this tool to quickly create a variety of different poses for your figure and then save out each one of those poses as an individual sculpt. So let's go ahead and take a look at a different digital sculpture. So here we have a giant Frode. You can see that uh, this one has a lot of skin texture, a lot of folds and creases. And of course you can look at your sculptures from any angle, including uh, from the bottom up. And what the software also allows you to do is throw different shaders or surfaces onto the material. So you can see here you can change the color and you can also change the type of surface. So you can tell it to be reflective or you can also tell it to reflect different images. So I think there are around a hundred different shaders that you can use on these surfaces right now. And let's go back to the default red shader. And then we're going to focus in on one specific area of the sculpt, so in this case the head. And I want to show you some of the different ways to put some finite detailing into these surfaces. So up here you have something called an alpha library, and these are just black and white images. In this case we have an image shaped like an arrow. So if you have a software that can create a black and white image, you can actually create your own alphas as well. But if effectively, these are attaching to the end of your brush, and you can use them to quickly add details like this to the surface of your sculpture. And you can see you can affect the orientation and the size of the end of your brush as you're sculpting across the surface. And again, if I step back down in levels of detail, we'll go ahead and open the mouth here. And then uh, notice that as I step back up, I have not lost any of those surface details or textures for the skin. And I think that about does it. Two of the software you can use to create your own digital sculptures are ZBrush from Pixelogic and Mudbox from SkyMatter.